With delegates at the COP26 climate conference discussing how to switch from so-called dirty to clean fuels, we thought we'd take a look at the role of hydrogen in the debate, as many experts are touting the natural gas has a crucial component in green energy solutions. Well, let's get the thoughts now of Jess Ralston. She's an analyst at the Energy and Climate Intelligence Unit. Well, thanks for taking time to speak to us here on the program. Well, high school students will know that hydrogen, of course, is an odorless, colorless uh, gas, but also highly combustible. So how safe is it? Well, with hydrogen, you know, it's an interesting one because although it has been talked about in, the, in a lot over the last few um, months and years, actually, um, it's not been made at scale really anywhere yet. And at the moment, you know, we make hydrogen using fossil fuels and that obviously releases carbon emissions, which we need to move away from um, if we want to meet, re meet our climate goals. So um, there is a lot of talk about hydrogen and safety trials are ongoing across Europe um, and in the UK as well, where we're doing a trial um, for hydrogen for heating. So there's lots to be decided about hydrogen, including just how safe it is. Um, but at the moment, you know, the trials are all looking good um, and it looks like it could be an option for some sectors. So how attractive is it then and how and where could it be used? So hydrogen um, is a very in energy intense fuel um, and that means it's suitable um, for heavy industries like steel making um, and also for use in heavy transport, which is like lorries and larger vehicles that perhaps aren't as suited um, for electrification like cars are. Um, so in these sectors, it could be a really valuable fuel and many experts agree that it will have a significant role in the net zero economy. However, there are some people who talk about hydrogen for heating homes um, and for other purposes where really it looks like other solutions will emerge as a better bet. But is it cost effective? You know, the COP delegates spent uh, so much time yesterday discussing how to, as the UK Chancellor put it, re rewire, if I can get my words out, the global financial system. You know, how much is all of this going to cost? Well, that's exactly what these trials are trying to find out at the moment. You know, nobody's made green hydrogen, which is hydrogen uh, made by splitting up water, H2O, um, using renewable electricity from wind farms. Nobody's really made that at scale. Um, so really, the costs are very uncertain. And although many people talk about hydrogen as the fuel of the future, um, obviously the cost is paramount to how useful it will be. So while trials are ongoing, it's very difficult to tell just how much the fuel will cost compared to not only the existing fossil fuels, which we obviously need to move away from, but also other solutions in the market. There are very valuable trials going on in places like Sweden. They're certainly leading the way on green hydrogen. Um, there is a green hydrogen plant up in the north in England. Um, but really, you know, these, these things are in the early stages and the fuel is not being produced at scale. Um, but yeah, there's, there's definitely other countries involved. Um, Europe seems to be uh, leading the way with their strategy. They've got a target of 40 gigawatts um, of, uh, of hydrogen capacity by 2030. Um, and that's really ambitious. Scaling up from almost zero today to 40 gigawatts will be a big task. Um, but it's widely viewed as necessary if we want to meet our climate goals.